Remember those times when we used to buy physical video games, which usually contained the whole game in it? Then after so many years came the era of digital video gaming along with the arrival of downloadable contents or DLCs. And now after multiplayer-only focused games like Fortnite, PUBG and CSGO started becoming popular, it is pushing the gaming industry towards a new video games business model called live service video games. And this thing, believe me or not, is still impacting the new generation of games a lot, which is why we could say that probably, we have lost the golden era of video games. Now guys if some of you are not aware of the term, live service video game, well, it is basically a new video game genre that has been introduced by big studio triple giants. If a video game needs to be always connected to the internet, heavily online co-op or multiplayer focused, or contains battle passes or, or has everything mixed in it together is considered as a live service video game, irrespective of its price tag or the platforms where it is released. Now some of you might be thinking, well, why live service games are bad? Actually there are plenty of reasons to be honest. But first, let me be clear that I am not talking about free-to-play online PC and console games like Fortnite or Apex, or those free-to-play mobile games out there. I am currently talking about those live service PC and console games, which you might have bought for $60 or $70, which was your hard-earned money. Now moving on to the reasons why live service games are bad, well, it is actually ruining some of the best gaming franchises. Remember the good old Batman Arkham games? The last game in the franchise, that is Batman Arkham Knight, was absolutely a banger. It is still one of the best superhero games with stunning modern day visuals and satisfying open world gameplay with various RPG elements that I have ever seen. Now the same studio Rocksteady Studios who was behind the making of Batman Arkham Knight, is launching an indirect sequel of the game which is S Squad, The Justice League. Unfortunately guys I can't say the full name of the game here due to YouTube's policy and guidelines, but yeah, this new villain-centric Justice League game is set after five years of the events that happened in Batman Arkham Knight. You can see in the game's trailer that Batman is still alive, so yeah if you were still waiting for a Batman Arkham Knight sequel to happen, well, then you may have decided to buy the game on day one, hoping to see some next general single-player superhero story-driven experience. Well, I was also thinking the same when I saw the trailer for the first time, until I realized that this game is going to be a live service game. Unlike the other Batman games set in the Arkham universe, this game has the worst things in this world, which are microtransactions and battle passes, which I seriously hate at the point after paying $60 to $70 for the game. I understand that the game recommends having a total of 4 real-time players hop into the game together and play missions cooperatively. Yes, the game also can be played solo, but still, you need to be connected online even if you want to play the game solo. Now when gaming companies tend to focus more on multiplayer and online elements in a story-driven game, then first of all the overall quality of the game, including its gameplay and storyline gets downgraded and moves far from the modern standards of AAA games. And again, we also saw this thing started happening with the game itself when Rocksteady released a gameplay reveal trailer, which got tremendous criticism and yeah, this is not the quality of a $60 or $70 game, even though the base price of the game is still not revealed yet, but hey, you got microtransactions and battle passes out there. Now games like Justice League should be focusing on making the game a true single player experience for the players. What's the point of giving the option to play solo when you still need to be connected to their servers always? Yeah sure, they have the right to make multiplayer or online live service games, but please, don't connect them and make them as a sequel for our beloved games. Now Rocksteady could have made this Justice League game separated from the Arkham universe, I think that should have been good both for us and the studio. Look at Gotham Knights, yes it is a good game to be honest. Even though it still doesn't feels that next gen, but still it did something which no other games from the Batman Arkham series ever achieved. It glorified the legacy of the Bat family. We can see more of the characters and relationships between Batgirl, Red Hood, Nightwing and Robin in the game. Batman is represented as more of a father figure, which makes the game special and different from the Arkham games. Also you can play the game totally offline if you're playing solo like the Arkham games. You can play Gotham Knights either solo or with a friend via its two-player online co-op mode. Apart from this, it has no other unnecessary live service elements at all. But for the Justice League game, well, things might be different. We will see how the game performs after it gets released next year. But apart from all, this will be the final performance that we will see from Kevin Conroy sir. He will be always remembered in our hearts. I have high hopes that Rocksteady will give justice to his performance irrespective of how the game is being developed. I seriously don't want the game to end up like Marvel's Avengers A Day.
Marvel's Avengers was really stuffed with several types of in-game purchases in the game's marketplace, which totally ruined the enjoyment of a story-driven game. Now guys, I completed the main story of the game long ago, but there were several things which I think made the game a real massacre. Various missions felt repetitive and lack of content most of the time, so I was not getting a satisfying and enormous superhero gameplay experience similar to that I got from the Batman games or even from the Spider-Man games of Insomniac games. I even have a very good experience playing the PlayStation 1 Spider-Man game rather than this modern-day Avengers title. After somehow finishing the base game, I never returned to the game till the date I am recording this video. Maybe someday I will, but I don't know. But from the storyline point of view, yes, the story was actually good, but it was really not polished and arranged with the care and love that the game required. Now even after getting some free story-driven DLCs, the game failed in the market, and hence this proved again that live service elements are bad when you are paying the standard game prices for the game to play. These in-game purchases in the paid games feels to me as if I am not buying a full-fledged game, but rather a half-baked computer science project. It feels like I am paying for such a game for which I need to pay a subscription type of something with my money after the company introduces a new DLC each season. Have you ever thought that why live service games with free-to-play models like Fortnite or Apex are so popular? Because you don't need to pay for a game, here you're not required to pay to access that online live service game that you might play only for the time being when you are hanging with your friends online on Discord. Yes, I know that many people get in-game items through microtransactions in these free-to-play online titles, and hey, there's no harm in this case as you're not paying for the base game itself to access it. And so you don't need to worry to give more time to the game than you require. People feel satisfied doing microtransactions in these types of free-to-play online games as it acts as a contribution used to thank the developers for providing access to their game without any initial cost and giving constant updates to their games. And if you are not satisfied or not liking the game that much compared to your expectations, then yeah, you can always feel free to uninstall and remove that game from your system without worrying much. And this is where games like Anthem, Crash Rumble, and Marvel's Avengers failed. The companies making these types of paid live games might have not understood the reason for the success behind those popular multiplayer games, which is why most of these types of games are getting out of their existence as time passes. The official support for Marvel's Avengers game is shutting down after the 30th of September this year. The game doesn't require internet connectivity to play solo. Yeah, you can still play the game online, but one day the servers will be taken down by the studio. And this happens with each and every game in this world which are totally online focused, or if the game has any online or multiplayer mode. But remember that you can always play the single player mode. Think that the online or live service game that you have bought today will become unplayable if the studio or the publisher doesn't provide a patch to play the game offline if it's ever possible to play solo. If you are sure that you will enjoy the game thoroughly throughout its entire life cycle, then yeah, go for it and buy the game without worrying much about the future of the game. But if you care more about game preservation, and want to get a game that you can play always solo without worrying about the game servers, then yes, spend that money on a different game. Now don't get influenced by your surroundings while taking this decision. Hence, games which requires always online connectivity becomes death after a certain point of time if the company doesn't provide a patch to enable offline play before the support officially ends. Take example for Payday 3. You need to be connected to the game's servers even if you want to play the single-player mode, as confirmed by the game director himself. However, you can play Payday 1 and Payday 2 solo totally offline, where you don't need to touch the servers to play the single-player mode. But unfortunately this is not gonna happening with Payday 3. Because, you know, microtransactions, battle passes and custom paid skins, even after paying the full price for the game. And in return what we're getting, a game that is totally tied with a server. And now if something happens like Diablo 4, then good luck playing Pay Day 3 even after paying $40. Similar things also with Gran Turismo 7. I can't believe even Sony has also started doing the same thing as others with their PlayStation exclusive games. I hope that the studios would provide an offline patch right before their support for the game's ends. But who knows, time will tell. But thank god there are several communities which keep their favorite games online services alive through their private servers after the official support of the game comes to an end. I have also seen some private servers for Disney Infinity Games toy box mode. So if it also happens with our favorite online games then this is a good thing and I absolutely support the game community for doing so. But let me tell you that this is still not that easy for most of the online centric games. 
So in the end, I would like to request all the giant AAA studios and publishers, please, give us a good 30 to 70 dollar AAA games, which should have no microtransactions at all, no in-game purchases, and obviously, the game should be a finished one that doesn't have any game-breaking bug. Take as much time as you need and give us good games like before, so that we can happily give our hard-earned money to play your AAA games. So yeah, this was all that I wanted to say. I hope that the Justice League game would not disappoint us. Also guys let me know your thoughts about this and what are your viewpoints regarding these paid live service games. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching the video. Wishing you all a great day ahead, and I will see you in this video and in the next one.